Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I have a figure review as well as hopefully a quick and dirty diorama project for this guy. You know who this is. It's Ryu, specifically from Street Fighter V. And uh, that is specific because the company that makes this, Iconic Studios, has an official license through Capcom to make one sixth scale figures from the Street Fighter V game universe. And their first figure out is one sixth scale. Ryu. Now, this was fascinating to me, piqued my interest, because in the world of six scale figures, uh, we're seeing a trend toward um, changing the materials that are being used, the materials to help improve posability, durability, and the realism of the sculpt of not only the head sculpt, but the body. And so Iconic Studios collaborated with another manufacturer, uh, TB League, or they used to be called Fison, who specialize in making silicone bodies. So a lot of times, the six scale figures I collect, they're either hard plastic, uh, or sometimes they have for exposed skin, maybe some rubber parts, but increasingly you're seeing the use of silicone, which is a heavier material, it's more uh, pliable, uh, it looks more like skin, and depending on the silicone they use may also last longer than some of the rubber materials. Uh, and that also means that they're casting this on top of a steel uh, internal armature, a real skeleton. So it's not just like the old action figures where you have an arm that just pops in, uh, in the shoulder socket. There actually is a ball and joint socket uh, throughout the entire skeleton here for the knees, the shoulders, the, the, uh, the elbows, uh, the hips, the body, the neck, um, which then you then can swap out the more hard plastic accessories for the hands, the feet, and here, the face sculpts. Uh, and I'm just, first off, incredibly impressed by the, this custom body that they made for Ryu. Um, TV League, they have a bunch of different standard body sizes, from very muscular bodies to lean ones, short and tall. Uh, but this is a unique one for the proportions of a Street Fighter character which also get me excited for what they may have coming down the line. So it perfectly, I think, represents that kind of caricatured style of Ryu. Those massive limbs, the massive arms, um, that huge barrel chest. And not only you can see is it very flexible and the poses hold really well. Uh, places where like the elbow bends in, because it's silicone, it's a little more realistic where you have uh, like an elbow bending in, and you know, even the silicone bunches up in the muscles. So uh, they actually can do a ton of different poses. You know, you can get the, the head movement. Yeah, I love just how rigid you can feel. Like as I'm moving this, there's res nice resistance to the armature, and when I let go of it, the pose is held pretty well. Comes with a bunch of different, you know, hands. You have your closed fists. You have your Hadouken hands together. Uh, even different feet as well. So you can be a Shoryuken, you know, in the air. So not only is Ryu himself very poseable, but also his clothes. Look at the gi here. The classic torn off sleeves. The collar here actually has a wire inside, so it holds its place, and as does his belt, black belt, and. My favorite, the on his headband right here. So you can make it look like he's blowing in the wind. Two different head sculpts, a more neutral expression and this more uh, angry expression. You know, mid fight, right? Mid bout. Um, comes with a few other accessories, a little punching bag. You have, of course, uh, Hadouken. This is translucent plastic on a clear plastic rod as a stand uh, and comes with. Mm -hmm this fold out backdrop that was part of the packaging. So that's nice as well. So I looked at this and I'm like, this is cool. You know, it represents that Street Fighter map that we all know and love. Uh, but I want something that's more part of like a, a diorama, a base that you can stand on. So that's what the, di the project, the diorama project is gonna be today. Uh, I found some plywood at home. I cut to about 12 inches wide uh, and then went online and got some just craft sticks. So thin wood craft sticks, super cheap. And I think we're gonna try to recreate some type of flooring um, that Ryu here can stand on that can also mount his Hadouken 
into. So we're gonna take these craft sticks, lay them out, cut them to size, um, and then do some painting on them and make ourselves a nice, simple diorama. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting off with uh, as a piece of scrap plywood found around the home. Um, I had this sort of past project, I know it's marked 12 inches uh, wide, which seems to be pretty perfect. I think it's like about eight inches, seven or eight inches deep. Thinking I want Ryu to be maybe kind of like a, he'll be diagonally making the most out of that, uh, the surface area with the Hadouken kind of mounted maybe in that corner. So good enough surface area for a diorama base. Uh, won't take up too much space and it'll fit in my detail of Ikea cabinet still. So here are just some cheap craft sticks bought online. Um, for scale, I wanted something that was not quite an inch wide, but definitely uh, more than like half inch. So I believe this is uh, three quarter inch wide. And if I lay them out, should be about 20 or so that will get us all the way to covering this board. Basically right there. So I'm trying to make it look like, you know, old flooring, outdoor flooring, the deck of a big dojo. Um, and for that, I definitely don't need all of the length of the stick, so I can cut it off. And the way I'm gonna cut it off is I'm actually gonna break it off. Break it off, because I want it to have a rough edge. I don't wanna take this to a bandsaw. It can be clean in the back, clean on the side, but I like the idea of the front edge of this being like it's a broken piece of driftwood or something. Um, so the first step is figuring out where my cutoff mark is, how far of an overhang I want, and then snapping off the uh, each of these to the right length. All right, so I've chopped off these uh, craft sticks to length. Uh, it's uneven, and I think that's the whole point. Like even as maybe unrealistic as the edge of you know the flooring might be, I think going a little bit exaggerated helps when it comes to scale, so it reads, so it doesn't need to be this, this perfect flooring, and it was quick and easy. Uh, but these sticks, speaking of uh, unevenness, they're a little too perfect, and they read just as Something taken to you know cut cut off a, a table saw, um, and I want to add more imperfections to this. So have a chisel here. Um, I'm going to grab maybe a craft blade, and I think I'm just going to start chipping away at the edges of these, make these look more rough. Maybe dig some notches in there, things that um, to make it look a little more like at scale planks. So that's what I'm going to do across these 20 planks right now.
We have our 19 whittled down sticks. So a rough edge, which I like, uh, and smooth out, just make it a little uneven on the two sides, the long edges here. Uh, and we wanna make these like plank. So for this, I'm gonna go back to uh, one of the first model making techniques that Kate Sabaker taught me, which is uh, to use an amber shellac. So if we look over to the wall, uh, where those resin blades are mounted, though, that's just foam core that Kate and I painted over and um, cut these lines in to make it look like some scale model uh, wood flooring. And that's with this Zinzer shellac. Uh, it's actually a little bit tough to find these days, at least in the amber tint. You can get the clear tint, and if you use an alcohol ink, you can also tint it yourself. We still have some of this amber here, and I'm gonna apply a generous coating on all of these to give them a nice uh, warm tint. And here we go. I'm being pretty generous with my coating here. Because uh, I want this to to build up a little bit, so hopefully add a little bit of surface texture. Um, even though it looks pretty dark, it will dry a little lighter. This stuff dries pretty quickly in about an hour. If you want to do multiple coats, you can do that in about an hour's time. Naked floorboards, one sixth scale floorboards for a street fighter diorama. Okay, there goes a generous application of our shellac, our amber tinted shellac. Uh, we're gonna let this dry for about an hour uh, and then do one final uh, dark wash on it to bring out some more details. So Next step, uh, I do wanna add more um, paint definition using a brown wash, but before I do that, I think we're gonna get this onto our platform. So I have this 12 inch wide plywood base. Uh, instead of applying with glue, I'm gonna use a 3M contact sheet, just a, essentially a double stick uh, sticker sheet. Uh, and that will be strong enough to keep these on, but also allow me to remove them if I need to, uh, which I think we will. So I'm gonna cut out, out a, let's see, this is exactly 12 inches wide, perfect. And so I think it's like exactly the right size. Maybe a little bit too big, so I'm gonna cut this off. I love this stuff. I use it for laser cutting all the time to adhere this to a sheet of wood, a sheet of acrylic um, on the bottom and then laser cut. And then I can remove the protective covering and apply that laser cut piece to anything without having to use spray glue or some type of cement. Not the prettiest application, I know. Okay. I'm intentionally leaving a little bit of space between the boards here. I think that's also gonna help sell the wood panel look. The tiny bit of space, it doesn't need to be absolutely pushed up against each other. Pretty good. Um, so an extra bit of definition. So what I have here is just some uh, burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna mixed up, acrylic paint mixed with some water. And I'm gonna apply a wash. What I wanna do here is get the edges, the places between the panels and some of the parts where I carved in, just to reveal those a little more. Um, it's gonna be a light wash. I'm gonna grab some paper towels and just hit with some paint and kind of wipe it off almost immediately. I'm taking a breath here because there's a part of every project, especially when it comes to paint, where I look at something, I'm like, oh, it looks, it looks pretty good. Like if I stopped right now, I'd be pretty happy with how this looks, although I know 
I know in my mind, I know in my heart of hearts that applying a wash and maybe a little bit of a dry brush is gonna make it look that much more realistic. But I also have that fear that maybe the color isn't right or I'm gonna apply it wrong and I'm never gonna get it back to how it looks now where I am technically pretty happy with it. But that's, that's how these projects go. I gotta push forward and go with what I, I know is gonna work, which is I'm gonna apply a wash and then a little bit of a dry brush. Here we go. You can see I'm focusing on the space between the boards, and the place where I really want to accentuate are all those little divots where I chipped away at the side. All that starts becoming more visible with that wash. I am super happy with this. Already this looks like it's a versatile uh, wood plank diorama base that's gonna be great for Ryu or for any type of other uh, scale photography that I can do. But there's one more thing I wanna do. So before, while this is drying, uh, we have our Hadouken. And something that jumped out at me as I was putting it together, it comes with you know this, this rod, the clear rod, this base, and this plastic piece here is that this is hollow. The wood, however they cast this, it is a hollow piece of tinted plastic. But that means I think there's an opportunity to put a light in here. Let's make this glow, right? Uh, and so we have our rod. We could, I mean, what I, well, what I've done is I've measured this rod, and I've found online the equivalent diameter but as a tube. So you can buy different wall thicknesses and different outer and inner diameters, these acrylic rods, and this perfectly fits inside our Hardukin. It's a little bit bigger. It will, it will hold it up, and I'm gonna cut it to length and then have it mounted into our diorama so that I can wire up an LED light. So let's figure out based on, I think Ryu was gonna be here, the Hadouken was gonna be here to maximize the diagonal. I can pull up this plank uh, and drill a hole through our baseboard as well as our plank to mount in this hollow rod. We are wired in. Uh, before we power in to wrap this up, between the barrel connector and the dimmer, I'm gonna include this guy. I covered this, uh, ooh, over a year ago now. This is like an uh, effects, um, LED effects generator that you put just in between uh, your power source and your between, I think between five and 24 volt. A lighting system. It's made for theater projections. It's an easy way to add uh, flicker, add um, some type of pulsating effect, lightning effect, fire effects. They have different ones and they're really cheap. You can get them. The company that makes this sells them for under $10 uh, and I have a bunch of these. I love putting them into projects. All right, let's get Ryu into place and wrap this up. There you have it. A quick little diorama display base build for this iconic studios 1-6 scale Ryu and his Hadouken now illuminated and pulsing from the inside. Uh, love this figure. I love the details. I love that articulation of the clothing of his G there, of the, the headband, uh, that silicone TV league body. 
really, really nice. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll include a list of materials and where you can find all the stuff I use in the description below, but stay tuned for more diorama projects and of course other videos on Tested. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. No, good. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.